What's up travelers, welcome back to the channel. As J Aviation HQ coming with with another video for you guys today. Today we have the model review of the British Airways Boeing 747-400 in the Landor livery. This is by Gemini Jets. Before we go any further into the video, uh, if you enjoy what you see so far and want to give some more support to the channel, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up as it would help me out moving forward. And of course, if you are new to the channel, welcome to As J Aviation HQ. If you like the content of model plane reviews, model plane unboxings, airport updates, infinite flight content, and other great stuff involving those those topics, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. And then that bell icon next to the subscribe button to be, not, to be notified when new videos go live on the channel. And also go ahead and comment below what you think about the Landor livery. In my opinion, it is arguably the best ever livery to be to ever be applied to the Queen of the Sky 747. Um, comment below if you agree. What uh, if you have flown this aircraft yourself? Of course, this livery here was one of the three liveries that were put on 747s when uh, back when British Airways were um, celebrating their centenary uh, of 100 years of service. Of course, the other two were uh, the Negus livery and of course the BOAC livery. Um, but of course, my favourite of the three, of course, was the Landor livery, which is the reason why I bought the model. Um, of course, yeah, there, there was also an, another livery on the A319, I believe. I think it was the BAE livery. Um, let me know if you enjoy that livery as well. But anyway, moving on into this video, um, I'm going to read out some information about British Airways as an airline and, and, and some brief information about this aircraft as well. So founded as British Airways on March the 31st, 1974, British Airways is the flag carrier airline of the United Kingdom and is commonly known by its famous call sign Speedbird. The airline is headquartered in London, England, close to its major airport hub at London Heathrow International Airport. British Airways' fleet currently comprises of 288 aircraft, which includes 30 A319-100s, 80 A320s, um, that is including the NEO variants, um, 27 A321s, also including the NEO variants, 13 A350-1000s, 12 Airbus A380-800s, um, 59 777s, including the 777-200ERs and the 300ERs, and we have the 35 787s, including the dash 8s, dash 9s, and dash 10s. Then they have five Donier uh, DO 328s. And last, last but not least, 21 of the Embraer ERJ 190s. But between April the 1st, 1974, and June the 4th, 2020, British Airways operated a total of 101 Boeing 747 jumbo jets including the 747-100, Dash 200, and of course the Dash 400 variants. British Airways was, uh, also operated the 747s with uh, BOC, BOAC, which stands for British Overseas Airways Corporation, uh, in 1969. Going into some information about the, air, the aircraft that we're looking at today, of course the Landor livery. The MEC number of this aircraft is 27090. This aircraft rolled out as the 959th 747 from the Boeing factory in Everett, uh, Painfield. This aircraft here is a Boeing 747-436. Of course, 36 is the Boeing um, uh, customer code for British Airways. Of course, it is a Dash 400 variant as well. Uh, this aircraft here performed its first flight on January the 25th, 1993. This aircraft, as of today, is 30.1 years old. As just mentioned before, this aircraft was built and produced at Everett Painfield, just north of Seattle, Washington. And this aircraft is currently being preserved at Dunfold Airport ever since December the 5th of 2020. That I think that was the day of this aircraft's retirement. This aircraft here was the registration of Golf Dash Bravo November Lima Yankee or G Dash B N L Y. For those who aren't too familiar with the, the phonetic alphabet. As mentioned before, this aircraft is a Boeing 747-436 or 400. 
uh, and was delivered to the airline of British Airways on, on February the 10th, 1993. This aircraft here is equipped with four uh, Rolls-Royce RB211-524 Gulf engines. This aircraft here is nicknamed the City of Swansea and it is wearing the Landor Retro livery, which of course was the livery that was, that was on uh, which was the main livery for British Airways between 1984 and 1997. 1997 was when the aircraft, or the livery was changed to the current Chatham Dockyard livery, which is seen on, on the majority of the, um, the fleet now. And um, this aircraft here was uh, painted into the livery in March of 2019 for British Airways' uh, celebrations for the, the 100th year anniversary. So going into the detail about the box now, let's have a look at it. So here we have the Gemini Jets logo at the in the top left corner. Here we have where it says made for collectors by collectors, very nice indeed. Here is the 2D rendering of the absolutely gorgeous Landor livery. Absolutely beautiful. I remember back in the day seeing this livery on the Concord up in Christchurch. Um, very nice indeed. Hopefully I can get a model of that as well. Here we have where it says the aircraft type, the Boeing 747-400. Here we have the British Airways logo here. This is the Chatham Dockyard logo. Here we have the wonderful to scale diecast model aircraft titles there. Here we have the look and sight tab. So if we look at tip, uh, put the tab up there, that's where the model would be sitting in. And in the top here we have the specifications of the model. And of course at the top of the box, I can't get it into shot, but up here we have some details about the 747 itself. Here we have the Gemini Jets logo on the bottom panel. And here we have the, the what Gemini Jets do. I must say they, they have gotten pretty, quite nice, uh, better, I should say. They've been doing quite nice lately, let's just say that, um, with their models. Here we have the Gemini Jets logo again and the scale and of course the item number GJBAW1857. Seven, of course, the BAW or Bravo Alpha Whiskey is the ICAO code of the airline. Um, and here is the the land delivery again, to the region of it, and there is the the uh, the aircraft type again. Here we have the Gemini logo on the top panel, and then here we have the the warning information about this aircraft. Then then we have the Barco with the item number on it again. On the top we have the the aircraft on a steep climb, and here we have the G Gemini Jets logo again. As well as it gets one of the slogans for the company of Gemini Jets based in the United States of America, of course Nevada USA is where they are located. Here we have what they do, as I just mentioned, Gemini Jets have gotten uh, better in, in the way that they do things with their models. Of course they do share some of their models with JC Wings. Which of course the model that you'll be that you'll be, be able to see in a moment is in the JC Wings mold, or the uh, I'll say the the older mold I should say. Um, I remember doing the model review of the National Airlines Boeing 747-400 freighter by by JC or I think it was Gemini Jets. Um, it was released by Gemini Jets. That's in the JC Wings mold. I want to go ahead and check that model review out. Top right corner, right about now. We'll be leading you to that um, video. Here we have on this side we can see the, the social handles of Gemini Jets, the website, Facebook page, Instagram page and of course their Twitter. Go ahead and check them out if you haven't done so already. Here we have the licensing information for the 747 and of course Boeing and of course um, the British Airways licensing as well. And under here we can see this aircraft was a 2019 release by Gemini Jets. Located in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. And of course, made in China. Uh, of course, Gemini Jets has their, their models made in China. Of course, as just mentioned, they share the agreement with uh, JC Wings to make their models, which of course is a Chinese-based brand. 
So that is uh, the first part of the video out of the way, the reading out of the airline and the aircraft and the showcasing of the box. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check out the model. And here is the absolutely stunning British Airways Boeing 747-400 wearing the absolutely iconic uh, Landor livery. As mentioned in the early part of the video, this is arguably the best livery to ever be applied to a 747 in general. Of course, there have been other great liveries on the, the Queen of the Skies 747 Jumbo Jet, of course, including the United Airlines Battleship Grey livery and, of course, their Blue Tulip livery as well. And, of course, the, um, the Pan Am liveries as well. And, of course, Continental's old livery when they used to have the, um, the Dash 100 and 200s in their fleet. Japan Airlines' livery wasn't, wasn't too bad on the side of, of a 747. But you can't ignore the Wernala Dreaming livery that was on, on the side of the 747-400 by Qantas. And, of course, the, the older Qantas, uh, sorry, the newer Qantas livery on the 747 as well uh, that was called of course Wernala was the um the last 747 to be retired from um Qantas's fleet if you want to go ahead and check out the model review I did of the Qantas Airways 747-400 by Gemini Jets top right corner right about now as where you need to go to see that video so going into this model review here of the British Airways 747-400 in the Landor livery I'm going to be showcasing the model up close to the camera, giving you some nice up close imagery of the model and the details on this model as well, moving forward. And of course, just give you a disclaimer, I will I do apologise for any part of the video where it come, becomes difficult to focus on it. Uh, the lighting is pretty dull at the moment, but I'll do my best to provide you with the utmost professional content. So let's go ahead and dive in straight into the model review. First of all, zooming in to the model and picking it up for you guys All right so here we have the front portion of the video order straight away focus messing out the focus here we have the front portion of the 747 aircraft in the middle of the shot we can just make out the the with the nose cone underneath that is the weather radar now the weather radar has the purpose to detect storms along the flight path to give the pilots a visual indication of rainfall intensity um, and the possibility of turbulence. Uh, this enables the crew to navigate around any potential hazardous areas along the assigned flight path for the well, flight plan for their flight. Uh, so moving down we have in the middle of the shot, just trying to focus on it for you guys. We have the window shields of the 747, quite iconic as well. With on the top of the windows there, you can see a November Lima Yankee, as of course the registration is Golf Dash Bravo November Lima Yankee. Um, and there you go, there's, there's the window wipers as well, very, very nice indeed. Here we have the forward section of the aircraft, of course, this is where first class is located on the 747 or where it was located on the 747 for British Airways and there we have uh, the city of Swansea titles just there in the middle of the shot there. Here we have the nose gear of the aircraft and the nose gear door with Lima Yankee on the side of it of course the last two digits of the registration. Here we have the rolling gears for the no or nose gear at least of this aircraft looking very very nice indeed. Here we have the first cabin door of the aircraft. This is the forward um, passenger or boarding door, I, I would say, for the first class and the business class of or, or those cabins of the aircraft, or classes, I should say. Then we have the top door there. I'm not too sure if this is a boarding door. Of course, I, I've, I've never flown on the 747 in, or 400 in, in my time. Uh, do let me know again if you have flown the 747, where did you go and what you enjoyed about the aircraft and of course the flight. Um, there we have the beacon light on the top of the aircraft there. I'll try and see if I can zoom in a little bit better and give you some detail there. Very cool and there's the f first of the um, antennas on this aircraft looking very cool. There is the Landor titles of the of British Airways looking very fancy indeed. 
and there we have the second of the boarding doors for the 747 aircraft on the bottom here we have the bottom antenna and then in the middle of the shot here if i can just get it to focus for you guys there we go we have the wing lights or the landing lights they are used uh during landing and of course during takeoff as well and um of course in the event of takeoff as i just mentioned they are to be turned off um when the aircraft goes above 10,000 feet and turned on one just before the aircraft descends below 10,000 feet here is the this size engines i believe this is the number two engine on this aircraft and of course here is the number one engine doing my best to focus on it for you guys there we go looking fantastic indeed if these are the uh, rolls royce rb211 engines quite famous in the world of course they they are also equipped on the boeing 757 as well here we have the wing of the Boeing 747-400 with the iconic winglet on the end. Of course the 400 variant of the 747 um, is different to the other ones. But, uh, you know, the 100, 200, 300 is, as well and, and of course the Dash 8 as well. Doing my best to focus on it for you guys. There we go. Of course the winglet was introduced on the Dash 400 variant. And, and it's also on the Dash 400 freighters and the ER as well. So here we have the red um, uh, navigation light. On the other side, we'll see that the navigation light is green. I have actually seen a, the 747 when I was in Sydney. And I think it was like 2014, I think it might have been. When the Qantas 747 was on or sitting at the gate. It's surprising how, how large these winglets actually are. Um, so yeah, very cool indeed. Of course, the 747 was the aircraft to um, introduce me to the to the love of aviation. So I am very, very appreciative of the Queen of the Skies. Here is the uh, the emergency exit door, the, or the overwing exit. Here, moving down another the biggest door. This is also, I think this is also used as an emergency exit door as well. And then moving down, we have the uh, the another another door at the end here. Just here. I think this is used to uh, board the aircraft and of course disembark the aircraft as well. There is an antenna on the top of the fuselage there. And just there is where the satcom would be, the uh, the Wi-Fi dome, uh, that is used to ident to provide the IFE on board the aircraft behind each of the seats. Here is the titles of where it where it states that this aircraft was to commemorate the the centenary of British Airways, uh, 1919 to, to 2019. Difficult times, of course. 2019 was when the pandemic um, came into 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 fruition um and of course that is what killed off the 747 in general which is quite sad uh more than sad i must say but i mean that's just uh the way things went i suppose there is the the registration golf dash bravo november lima yankee of the landor livery and here is the iconic landor tailfin of course the landor livery uh, was on the British Airways' livery uh, between 1984 and 1997 before the Chatham Dockyard livery took its place, which is the current livery that we see on British Airways. But there we have the British Airways, or uh, sorry, the United Kingdom um, coat of arms there, as it says, to fly to serve. But pretty sure this is British Airways' coat of arms. Um, very cool indeed. There is a November Lima Yankee on the top of the tail fin. Last three digits of the registration. Here is the stabilizer of the of the aircraft, the horizontal stabilizer. There's also one on the other side, just there. These small dots you can see on the tip of the stabilizer here. They are the logo lights. Or the tail lights, they light up the tail fin during night operations or of course or the morning operations, early morning operations to provide 
uh, let's say an indication of what the operator is of the aircraft to a to the people in the control tower to easily make out who the who the airline is. In this case, it would be British Airways, and of course, they could be also be used as a marketing tool to anyone without within or around an airfield uh, to you know make uh, to make them think maybe we should fly that fly that airline. You know, um, would be pretty cool. Of course, seeing the land or livery all lit up at night time would be pretty, would have been pretty nice indeed. Of course, this air, this air, this particular aircraft airframe is at, is um, stored at Dunfold Airport. I believe that's in Wales. Um, do do um, correct me if I'm wrong there. Uh, but here we have the landing gear. If I can just get the, it to focus on them. Doing my best, maybe if I zoom out just a little bit. But anyway, here is the landing gear on this side of the aircraft. They do indeed tilt and roll. This one as well. These roll as well. The only one that I have a problem with is this one here. Pretty loose on the on the strut. But I mean, it doesn't really bother me as the aircraft is always going to be grounded. Um, and of course, at the rear of the aircraft, we have the APU, abbreviated for the Auxiliary Power Unit. So let's have a look at the other side of the aircraft and the differences on this side. One thing I didn't show is this right here. That is the, um, the cockpit emergency hatch, um, or something like that, the emergency escape hatch for the cockpit. That is for the pilots to uh, vacate the aircraft in the event of an emergency. But on this side we have a, a, a baggage door here, forward baggage compartment here. And then moving down the aircraft we have the rear baggage compartment. Or baggage compartments because there's more than one here. Just, there's another one behind that as well. On the edge of the wing here we have the green navigation light. And of course, everything else is just flipped, including the titles of British Airways. And of course, the the iconic Landor cheat line, very cool. Goes all the way down the aircraft, right down to the tail plane of the aircraft. Not too sure what this little square is. So do let me know what this little square is if you are uh, if you are familiar with the. With the seven four seven, it might uh, if uh, if I'm correct if the, if this is a uh, an entryway to the APU or the AP, APU entryway might be at the bottom. We'll have a look at that now. Um, is of course the oh there it is there. There's the entryway of the APU just in the shot just now. Uh, looking at the belly of the aircraft or the bottom of the aircraft. Again, I do apologise if there's any uh, difficulty in terms of focusing. The lighting has kind of dulled off in the, in the last couple of minutes. But here is the the landing gear doors. That, that's where the landing, landing gear sorry, would uh, retract into once the aircraft's landing gears are going up. Here is the Gemini Jets logo. And of course, here is the old mould that they use for the 747. Doesn't really bother me in this case, as of course it is the Landor livery. Here is the, another a, a great look of the landing gear of this aircraft. Very nice indeed. I'm a massive fan of the 747. As mentioned, it was the aircraft that introduced me to aviation. Um, very, very sad to see these days 747s are gradually um, disappearing. Of course, in recent, uh, recent weeks, recent months, we saw the last ever 747 roll it uh, roll out and uh, be delivered to atlas air i do have the model of that particular aircraft um november 863 golf tango going to uh atlas air 747-8 freighter by phoenix models that is soon to be on the way i will definitely be doing a model review of that one so do stick around for that go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and of course, give this video a thumbs up and comment below what you think about it at the moment. Turn on the notifications for, for when that video goes live. Don't miss out on anything. Here is the the uh, the beacon light in the middle of the shot. If I can get it to focus, 
there is the stand hole for anyone who puts a, a, a one top one scale aircraft on a stand. Here is the wing of the aircraft and the underside of the winglet there. Underside deta detail of the RB211 engines. Very, very nice indeed. And then we'll have a brief look at the other wing. Here we have the registration un underneath the wing. Golf Dash Bravo November Lima Yankee. And of course the RB211s. Very nice. And then there's the other one. Very cool. And last but not least, here is the um, the rear baggage compartment upside down. And then, as mentioned, here is the entryway to the APU, auxiliary power unit. Overall, a very, very nice model. This, uh, this aircraft, I think, was in a recent um, airport update. Um, it was in my classic or my nostalgic um, classic uh, model review or uh, airport update. Want to go ahead and check out that model, that airport update? Go ahead and check it out via the top right corner right about now. The card will be leading you to that video. As mentioned, absolutely gorgeous model. It's a very rare model these days. But of course, if you manage to find it, do go ahead and purchase it, as of course you will not regret getting it. Um, of course, uh, let me know if you did get any of the other retro liveries, the Negus livery and of course the BOAC livery, otherwise known as the BOAC livery, but I know some people don't like it, don't like it when that is pronounced like that. Um, but yeah, absolutely gorgeous livery, Man, so happy to um, have this in my collection, I can't believe I was actually considering um, selling this model, I think it, I, that would have been a everlasting regret in terms of uh, model collecting. I uh, can't believe I actually considered uh, selling this model, in, uh, actually, to be honest. But yeah, uh, that will do it for this portion of the video. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed what you saw. If you did go uh, enjoy what you saw, go ahead and subscribe to the channel below. Then that bell icon, as mentioned, to be notified for when future videos go live on the channel. I have other, some more great videos coming very soon and some more model reviews of Dreamliners, A330 Neos, 747s and I have some awesome unboxings um, coming very soon as well. Uh, entry models, Phoenix models, JC Wings, Gemini Jets, that they're all coming. Hopefully that they'll be arriving soon so, so I can provide you with that content. If you want to go ahead and support me even further on my social channels, I have Instagram, Twitter, my, my airport's website is below in the comment section below. And I also have a Patreon account if you want to support my movement on social media even further in terms of what I do on Instagram and of course uh, here on YouTube. Go ahead and check out the links in the description below the PayPal account as well. I believe will be in the, the top of the description below. If not, it will just be the Patreon account at the top of the description below. Uh, but all the links, including my Infinite, Infinite Flight page, will be in the description below. So go ahead and check them out. Uh, so thank you very much for coming along and tuning in for this video. The model review of the British Airways Boeing 747-400 wearing the iconic Landor livery. If you enjoyed what you saw and wanted to hear some more on the left hand side would be my most recent video. On the right hand side would be the full playlist of model reviews I've done so far on the channel. In the middle is where you can subscribe. But until next time guys, fly safe, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.